Hello, everyone. Welcome to week five of Writing Wikipedia Articles. Uh, today, uh, we are joined by two guests. We have, uh, we have with us Dan Cook. Dan is a, a longtime friend of mine. Uh, I met him through our work in journalism. He's a, a former uh, newspaper editor, and he does uh, a, a variety of work in the communications field. And has been, he's, he's not a terribly active Wikipedian, but he has done some projects with Wikipedia um, along the way. So uh, I very much look forward to talking to him and getting his perspective on some of the content that we're working on in the call. And we're also going to be hearing from Max Klein. Max is a longtime Wikipedian. Uh, I first met Max through our work together in the Wikipedia Public Policy Initiative, which is was a pilot program that led to the Wikipedia Education Program. Uh, he uh, worked with a class at uh, the University of California at Berkeley to, uh, to help them explore Wikipedia. And more recently, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I uh, had the pleasure of working with, with Max a little bit uh, lately uh, in his position with OCLC Research. So OCLC is an organization that provides services for libraries around the world. Um, one of their more famous projects is WorldCat, which some of you may have heard of, um, which is a, a directory of resources at different libraries that you can pull up online. And so Max served there as a Wikipedian in residence, and uh, he helped them think through a number of ways that libraries and Wikipedia can work together to, um, to further both of their missions. So. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing from Max both about some of his work there uh, and also uh, he's going to walk us through uh, some of the content that we're looking at in the open education sphere and give us a sense of what these articles look like to ex an experienced Wikipedian and, um, and maybe give some ideas of what we can do specifically in those articles or in articles in general uh, as we improve them. So hopefully this will be a, a good uh, a good bit of support as you're all working on your own final projects because I think we'll have some common themes that we see uh, among all of these, the, the articles that we look at. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a long introduction. Uh, before we dive in and talk with Dan and with Max, uh, I want to make sure that we're all uh, kind of caught up. So I want to take a few minutes and if anyone has burning questions about the final project, uh, I'll, I'll say these are uh, for more logistical questions, things that we can deal with rather quickly in the first few minutes. Um, if you have more detailed questions, please save those for the later part of the class after the first hour. Uh, and we can dive in and, and really take a look at your project. But if there's anything that's, that's really confusing you or holding you back, um, why don't you go ahead and ask it now uh, on the Etherpad. Um, and also, if you have any questions about the badges, uh, that I introduced last week, the Wikisu Verba badge and the Wikisu Signature badge uh, that you can earn as you complete the course. So uh, I'm going to pause for a, a breath and a sip of water here. And if there's no questions, then I think we can dive right in with our guests. Okay. So. Sarah, are you seeing anything pop up on the Etherpad that I ought to that I ought to look at right away? I actually um, do have. There's nothing about. to pressing. It's details about articles right now. I was thinking that people might appreciate a review of the badge process since we went through it fairly quickly last week and hadn't really talked about it previously. But we could maybe, we could maybe do a quick poll to see how many people would be interested in that, and you might want to do that later as well. Yeah, that sounds good. Why don't uh, why don't you click on the green check mark on your screen uh, if you'd like to hear a little bit more about badges before we get going? Okay. The green check mark is at the top of the list of contacts. You uh, see a list of little icons, and you can say yes or no, with green or red. Okay. I see just a few people, so. Um, I don't know if that's uh, just because people haven't found the check mark, or I, I'll, I'll do a, a quick review. And again, if we need to get into some more depth, uh, we'll do that after the um, 
after the main session about an hour in. So let's see, I'm going to pull up my screen share here. I'm getting strange technical failures, which I hope are not an issue. Actually, I just got that too. I'm going to guess a lot of us just got that to an error. Okay. I haven't seen that one before. So it's, it's always an adventure here in writing a, writing Wikipedia articles. <laughs> Um, okay, so I assume you can all see my screen. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so in this uh, in this top section, you have the in in our, in our header, you have this link to badges. So you can click on that, and that'll take you to the page that describes the Wikisu Wiki Signator badge and the Wikisu Verba badge. Uh, the main goal in the course is for everyone to earn the Wikisu Verba badge. So if you're following along, uh, if you've been attending most of our sessions, and if you have been uh, doing your homework uh, all the way through and, and, and uh, working with various articles, working with your user page, things like that, uh, and also if you've chosen a final project and are working towards improving that, one step on the quality scale, then you will earn the, the Wikisu Burba badge. Uh, the one thing that some people have trouble with, well, there, there, are these, there are two criteria. So one of them is that it be uh, improved one step on the quality scale. That is, of course, a somewhat uh, subjective measure, but I think, uh, I think most of you have a good sense of what those differences are. Uh, you can you can find the quality scale linked in the final project page if you have questions about that. Um, when you submit your final project, what you're going to do is explain to me why you think it's improved one step on the quality scale. So it's not like you have to go through a complicated um, assessment process on Wikipedia to get this. Uh, this is this is something that I'm going to evaluate when I'm looking at your final project, and uh, I'm confident that if you think that you have improved it that much, you probably have. So um, I've, I've found that most of our students tend to be very critical of themselves and really wonder whether their, their work is good enough. And in every case where someone submitted it, it really has been. So don't be shy about that part. Um, I'm, the, uh, the other criterion is that you need to make 200 or more edits in Wikipedia. That may seem like a lot, but keep in mind that's every single time you change your user page or uh, post a question to a talk page or uh, make a, you know, fix a typo, things like that. So if you've been following along every week, you're probably closer to that than, than you think. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you something now that I'm not sure if I've demonstrated before. Uh, first, I need to log into my account. So if you are uh, trying to figure out how many edits you've made, the way you want to do that is click Contributions at the top of the screen, and then go all the way to the bottom. This is, so this is the list of your own contributions to Wikipedia. Go all the way to the bottom and click this link uh, that says Edit Count. And this is going to take you to a, uh, a, a, an external tool that's it's outside of Wikipedia itself, but it is on a, a Wikimedia project. And this will tell you, oh, I see, I have, yes, okay. So this, this will tell you on uh, line, yeah, so total edit. Is 76. Uh, and so, so there is a more detail. This has actually changed since the last time I looked at it. So uh, that hence my my confusion. But uh, this is where you can see that. So that number should be at least 200 when you request uh, the Wikisu Verba badge. If it's not there by the end of the course, I see someone has asked when is the final project due, Alex. Um, the you know we we hope that you would finish by the end of next week. Uh, it is a six week course. Uh, and we expect that uh, probably you will submit your project at that time, but it's not a problem if you don't. Um, if you feel that you need some extra time, 
uh, you can submit your badge, you can su submit your work for the badge really at any time. Um, it's, I'm, I'm happy to review these at any time they come through and also other people who've earned the badge in the past can evaluate it and award the badge. So, um, yeah, so uh, if, if you do find that you're not quite getting to that threshold or you're not quite ready to submit at the end of next week, that's not a problem. Um, Griso, I see you, you say that's either or, 200 edits or the improvement of an article. No, it's actually, it actually is both. Um, and I'm sorry if that's not clear in the, uh, in the description. Oh, I see. It's, so number one is either, either start a new article and bring it up to, uh, up to start class or improve an existing article at least one level. And then in addition to whichever of those, of those you choose, it's also 200 edits. Okay, and, in, and also if you feel that you're not getting to the WikiSue Burba badge and you don't expect to get there anytime soon, that's what the WikiSue Signature badge is for. So this is a much uh, easier one to earn. Uh, if you have tried to come, if you've come to a few sessions and, um, and haven't really taken on a final project or haven't made major improvements for it, this is the one you can apply to anyway because almost certainly I think uh, probably probably everyone currently listening to me has earned this badge. So um, there would be, th th this one um, is certainly within your reach. Okay, so uh, if we have more questions about the badges, let's quit, let's uh, take those after the session because I want to jump in and, and talk to our guests. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start off with Dan. Dan, as I said before, is a, a journalist and communications expert by background, and he's engaged with Wikipedia in a couple of interesting ways. So I think uh, he's, he's going to tell us a little bit about his general take on Wikipedia and also uh, take a look at some open education content, too. So Dan, take it away. Thanks, Pete. Well, Pete was my um, instructor on Wikipedia. Um, since he was in on it early, and I knew him around that same time. He was sort of able to uh, keep me up there. Louder, so right okay. So, he, you know, he, he was able to kind of bring me up to speed. I just want to say the, the primary ways that I've used Wikipedia, the primary way is as a journalist. And when I know as working with different editors, when we started, when I was an editor, in fact, and people started using it, I wouldn't allow it to be a standalone source because I would say to my reporters, this is, um, you know, this is, this is, it's great to have this, but you need to go to the actual sources that are being cited. And, uh, and I was telling Pete the other day that in the work that I do now for several different editors, I can just cite Wikipedia and they don't, they never ever ask me to go any further. And it feels a little bit funny to me I mean, I do trust it for the most part, but um, I'm surprised at, at uh, the acceptance level by editors now of Wikipedia as a reliable and valid source of information. So then apart from that, Pete, I also had for a while, I had this uh, bizarre sort of communications marketing job with a startup in Portland, and they had a Wikipedia site and it was just plastered all over with, you know, this needs to be improved, and this sounds like an advertisement, et cetera. And um, the, the founder of the company really wanted that thing to be cleaned up. So I took a look at it and immediately called, I think I speed dialed Pete because I could see, I, at first I didn't even see how it could ever be fixed. But um, by working with, with Pete and, and his partner at the time, we, it probably took us a few months, but he, you know, they, they actually helped me to do it. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. They actually helped me. They walked me through it and helped me edit the thing until it actually was accepted. And that was an amazing process uh, to be going up against people in the Netherlands and places like that who were really sticklers on this you know, this tiny little company in Portland. Can I break in? Sure. I, I just want to point out on your screen right now, this is the version of the article before Dan called me. And uh, I think if I, maybe Dan can speak to this, I think the conclusion we reached was that probably someone who worked for the company, maybe an engineer, previously had started the Wikipedia article 
Um, and so it was very, it was very heavy on technical details. Um, and uh, it, it, was, it, it really didn't comply very well with Wikipedia's overall standards. So uh, Dan entered it as a, a communications person really wanting to do it the right way, uh, but had a, as a starting point something uh, to work with. It wasn't like he was trying to start an article from, from scratch. Yeah, that's correct. And, and for us, the biggest hurdle was notability because it was a really small local company. But it turned out that they actually had gotten a fair amount of, of uh, tech press um, at a couple of their releases. And so we were able to use that and some other mentions on blogs and so on that I had actually facilitated so that we, we finally were able to uh, meet the notability requirements. We got the rest of it cleaned up. Um, and our critics finally signed off on it. So I think if you look at it today, there it is. Sad, sadly, the company is no longer the company no longer exists, but the article does. <laughs> but, but notice how many more yeah. independent references. Yep. And, and I, th I think also uh, an important thing to note in a case like this, because Dan worked for the company, uh, it's very important to be very uh, clear and upfront about your connection. So in this in this case, uh, I suggested that he add this comment uh, where he says, I would like to propose an overhaul of the article. And he clearly states, I'm an employee of Ontier. So he, if you're curious about this, you might want to look through that discussion and see what it looks like for, uh, for someone to kind of engage with, uh, with people and persuade them that, that, uh, that this really is a, a sufficiently neutral point of view and uh, that there's sufficient independent sourcing and things like that. And, and I think one of the things I was impressed with Dan is that he was flexible on this. There were places where, um, where this volunteer who had put some of the tags on the article had problems with the way that Dan had written it and even that I th uh, thought were reasonable, but uh, you know, his perspective was different and Dan was, uh, was very willing to make some changes to address those concerns. Well, I think part of it was that Pete really schooled me on, you know, for instance, the person, the, the founder of the company had actually gotten in some arguments with, with the critics, which really does not serve your purpose at all. So Pete talked a lot about, you know, don't get angry. Um, you know, you can hold your ground, but, but do it from an ethical, academic, more or less standpoint. And so I think, um, yeah, I think, I think if you looked at the discussion, it was, it was pretty interesting. And like Pete says, I was willing to concede plenty of points. And in the end, the founder of the company was not very happy with the article because it wasn't the marketing piece, which is what he wanted. Um, but uh, it did meet the Wikipedia standard. And, you know, I, I was pretty happy that, um, that they did stick to their guns and didn't let this stuff go past them. Because it gave me, that, that single experience gave me quite a bit of confidence in Wikipedia as a reliable source, actually. Okay, great. So um, I, I think, uh, Dan, would you like to comment on uh, something you haven't worked on, on an educational piece? Was it, it was uh, Open Educational Resources. Do you think you could maybe give us some sort of quick impressions of what that looks like to someone who's outside the field and uh, coming to the article for the first time? Yeah, I wouldn't. I didn't spend a lot of time reading it, but um, I felt like it was. It might. It, it might actually be. You know, you might actually be able to make it a little more clear. To again, thinking of myself as a reporter, it's not. It wouldn't be unlikely that I would get an assignment to do a story on this. And so, um, my initial take was it, it was a, just a little bit dense. I wasn't exactly sure. You know what all the explanations meant and so you might want to work a little bit more on that but again I thought it was pretty thoroughly uh, researched and sourced and so and again sometimes when I'm not a hundred percent clear on the meaning of, uh, of a Wikipedia citation if I trust if I trust the sourcing and I'm working I'm writing something for a technical audience you know I'll just copy and paste it you know because I'm assuming it, with an article like this that, that you know what you're talking about. And so it doesn't, I don't have to understand every word of it. 
so let me let me ask a leading question or two. Um, do, do you think that uh, that it might have helped in that sort of wading through the jargon, like understanding technical terms, if it had a more substantial lead section that that introduced all the detailed sections? Oh uh, yeah, no, that's yeah, because I, I felt the lead was a little bit dense, and then there it was, you know. So especially again for a journalist, if we're if I'm working on an article and I've got, you know, because a lot of these turnaround times are pretty tight, like an hour. You get the assignment and they want something an hour later. Uh, for instance, I'm writing about a company that is involved in this where something happened at the company and they want an article and I have to describe what the company does. It's, it's much better if there's a little more um, meat up top when I, when I call it up. So that, so that if I'm going to, you know, make a, you know, synopsis of something or even just say Wikipedia says this and just copy and paste it, um, there's a little more explanation to it that maybe could be understood by a general crowd. Okay, great. I'm going to also just pull up the discussion page on this article. And I think uh, maybe uh, when we talk with Max in a moment, too, uh, we might come back to this. But I know some of the students in the course have been bringing some things up for discussion here. So I just kind of want to point these out. Uh, Lit Jade asked uh, about a month ago, is this, should open educational resources be a proper noun? Should it have capitalized first words? And uh, she got one response, but that's all. And so this is something she's been wondering, is this, do we have enough of a consensus to make this change? Uh, this might be something uh, for other students to take a look at and uh, put your opinion in there. And, uh, and especially if you want to look at the Wikipedia manual of style and see how it how it fits in with with that definition um, the uh, so here we, ha we have a, a question from one of our current students uh, about the role of tenure track faculty at, at traditional universities um, and uh, and then another student uh, pointed out that he has or she has let's see I'm having a hard time seeing is this Viv or researcher guy um, oh, I see. I think we've. I think a couple of sections got inadvertently combined here. It looks like uh, another zone or Viv Rolf maybe was was asking about um, adding content before consulting the talk page. Um, so this this might be a good thing to take a look at too, and we might have some some opinions in the in the class. And uh, and then Viv has come back more recently too with this uh, this suggestion of some possible article enhancements. So one thing, if anyone who's getting pretty comfortable with the wiki code right now can sort out what happened with the section headings, it might be nice because it looks like this this was meant to be a section header um, and somehow ended up getting combined together. It also looks like these two signature lines somehow got combined, uh, another zone and Viv, Viv Rolf. So you might want to look at the history and see if you can kind of sort that out. It looks like someone might have uh, might have saved something inadvertently. Um, so anyway, uh, I think these will be things we can, can come back to. Uh, but uh, I would like to move on to our second guest now. Uh, and again, in case you came in a little late, let me just do the quick introduction. And I'll, Max, if you want to add anything to this, please do. Uh, Max Klein is, has recently completed a stint as a Wikipedian in residence with the OCLC research. Uh, OCLC research is, uh, well, OCLC overall is an organization that provides services to libraries around the world. And so Max's role was to help them figure out how to connect with Wikipedia and do things that support both Wikipedia's goals and, uh, and libraries' goals. So uh, Max, why don't you take it away? Thank you very much. Yes. So. Um, Pete, you were mentioning that I uh, just finished a stint as Wikipedia in residence for OCLC. Um, so one of the things that I enjoyed doing there, I was working a lot with different, um, not only citations, but different um, data that could be used um, that, that related to different pages. Um, and one of the uh, requests that I got early on was to use this uh, idea of authority control which is a library uh, term of art, uh, which is to sort of, um, on Wikipedia, we know that disambiguation um, is, is a big deal. And often, you know, probably when we 
first ran into a disambiguation page on Wikipedia, we didn't really know what, um, what that was a sort of our first introduction to dis to disambiguation. But in the library uh, context, it's been happening for many years. Um, I, I just want to point out, and, I actually um, don't think yes. we. I don't think we've yes. actually covered disambiguation. We usually have by this point in the class, but maybe you could introduce that a little bit. Covered. Some students have run into it, but I don't think have by this point in the class, but maybe you could introduce that a little bit. Some students have run into it, but I don't think everyone has heard Well, let's do, can we do a poll to see just quickly how many people have run into a Wikipedia disambiguation page? Just for fun, just as a fun statistic. Well, as that's um, populating, yeah, basically, um, the way that disambiguation happens on Wikipedia, oh, it looks like quite a vast a majority here. Um, like out of about 10 clicks, nine are there. Yeah, I mean, so the way that every Wikipedia article is identified on Wikipedia is through its title. So maybe, Pete, you can show the URL, the title URL. Um, highlight it. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so, th so that is the, the name of the article. Um, that's a problem when two of the same people are called John Adams, um, because there are two different people, two different titles. Um, that There's basically a conflict there. And um, the way that that's resolved in the Wikipedia context is oftentimes uh, there'll be the title will change and there'll be a, a parentheses and then that the, the then the disambiguation will occur by sort of giving a distinctive feature. Uh, the way that this was, that's the Wikipedia sort of way to do it and the way that it was done in um, the library realm was to give unique numbers to every topic and then um, have the unique numbers have a central database. So I made about 250,000 edits to Wikipedia using a bot uh, and for those who don't know, a bot is a computer program that automatically edits Wikipedia. Um, so, like, if we if we look at the John Adams page here, uh, so if we type in John Adams into search, maybe um, we'll see what happens. It's a very common name. Um, so it gives you one specific John Adams, but um, then Wikipedia says there's a disambiguate like this is a, there are different John Adams, so. We click on this. Um, so, so we, if we clicked on this ambiguation, we would find all those different um, different links. Um, but even if this one person is a bit more famous, like how can you be sure you have the very right one? Well, the library. In fact, the library of Congress keeps track of all the different John Adams. So if we scroll down, okay. So this is how many different John Adams there are. You know, like 50 or something. Uh, and if we scroll down to the bottom of this page here, Pete, uh, just above the categories section, um, it's a pretty quite a long page. Um, you'll see this box authority control. So this is the project that I did, and um, you can see all these different numbers here, or the numbers that different national libraries keep on it. VAF is the combined international library, which is um, a collaboration between the uh, Library of Congress and the German National Library. And then LCCN is the um, Library of Congress control number. But um, yeah, so um, you know, if you click on the VF one now, you could you just now basically all the as two uh, more than 250,000 people uh, Wikipedia articles are linked with their library records, um, and this would tell you how to get more information about these people in the library. So that was my main project. Um, for a while, uh, yeah. This is so. Th yeah, this is all the information that different libraries have. Like so, on on this person, but or this identity. Um, so you can see selected titles, etc. Um, so this is also a good way. I also once I had connected these things. I um, if you sorry, if you scroll down one a little bit more, Pete. Sorry. Uh, preferred forms. I guess this one doesn't have any other preferred forms or, or alternative name forms. It says 4XX. Yeah. So here you can also see the Japanese version of what this person should be called. And so actually, in another project called Wikidata, which I don't know if we've covered yet, I uh, 
using the control or for control number, I um, I imported uh, the Japanese uh, or all the different other type their alternative names of a single person uh, into Wikidata. So this the, the connection is useful because you can also glean library data out of um, out, out of having the connection. Um, so, uh, Max, uh, Max uh, sorry, technical issues here. Um, and Max, if you can, when I'm speaking, if you can either turn off the talk button or um, or turn down the volume of your speakers. Okay. Um, so, uh, I think if you could, if, if we could rewind together and just show people how we got here, I think that would be helpful. I think we got here uh, kind of quickly, um, and uh, so I guess I'll just do that. Really quick. The, uh, so from the bottom of an article, like a biography, you go all the way to the bottom, and you'll find this authority control box, and the and this has many such links. Um, so VIAF is the one that we're looking at, and that pulls up this page with uh, with all of the different uh, links. Uh, and also, what was the other thing I was oh, I was going to mention something else, but I lost it. So back to you, Max. Sorry. Okay, that's that, not a problem. Yeah, I, I, I now I'd like to move on a bit um, and talk about um, uh, another topic which also might segue into um, some uh, uh, some critique. Um, so, um, I was looking at the page Wiki Project uh, Open Educational Resources, as was requested. Um, um, and well, actually, no, not sorry, not the um, the the actual. Were we looking at the? Yeah, not the Wikipedia page, just the the art main the main page about it. Um, and uh, I was looking at the different citations that are used there. Um, so the way that I did that was I clicked edit. Um, oh, uh, so I was looking at the sorry different citation templates that were used here. So. Um, I think one of the main ones that's used here, and I did this using a control F technique to do fine, was to look for there's a site journal, uh, which is a template that allows you to input information or use a citation that has come from a journal. Um, another one that's used is site book. Um, I actually didn't know if there's any site book. Let's see if there's any site book. So site so this is a book citation. Um, you know, you can see there's the author's last and first name here, and who's published it. Uh, another one is Site Web. And so there's also citations from the web. Now, there's but, but there isn't any. One of the projects that I've been working on is also to use something called Site DOI. Um, and I don't think there are any exist here. But basically, the, the, the problem is that if you look at one of these citations, like oh, Pete, if you can highlight the citation just below, yeah. Um, it's quite complicated and laborious to enter that information. You've got different, you have, sort of have to separate different um, uh, parameters by the vertical bar. And you have to name the different parameters, um, and then you have to wrap it inside. Um, so then you have to keep track of also the. Sometimes there are like um, you have to keep track of sort of where it begins and ends. So so because that's difficult, um, there are different. One of the tools that was developed was called Site DOI, and basically academic or other types of publishing. Uh, just like an ISBN is released for a book, uh, DOI is also the equivalent of ISBN for journal articles. Um, and the way that, and so if you just if you just use this site DOI template, then with the DO and then use a vertical bar, um, and then you would type in the the DOI number. I sorry, I don't have one off hand, but. Um, Basically, what would happen is that a, a, another no, robot. Max, um, uh, why don't you walk us through how to find one?
Is that okay? Can you just tell me where to click and we can just find one to paste in here to try out? Uh, Max, we can't hear you. I think you turned off your talk and maybe didn't turn it back on. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So, um, yes. So, um, I don't know. One of the ways that I normally find, I, I typically am used to looking uh, in PubMed Central, which is for medical publishing. Um, so, it, um, we can take a look um, if we go to like a. Oh, so here's a, so here's a DOI actually, right? So this is actually a book that has a DOI. And the way that this could be expanded is if we copy this DOI, so just pretend that you got a DOI somewhere else, um, and if you pasted it in into the uh, site DOI template, just above, um, and then you close the brackets, then, I mean, it, it won't happen immediately, but uh, basically what happens is now if you were to save the page, a robot would come uh, every about every 30 minutes. A robot scans Wikipedia for these templates, um, and will uh, will go and look up that information online. Um, yes, exactly. So uh, we'll will come and replace this. So a robot will edit the page and replace that with the full citation um, by looking up the author's last name and looking up the publishing information. So it's, it's really the easiest and most accurate way to cite something that has this. Um, so that is the, um, so that's the project I'm working on now. The, the additional catch of it is that um, sometimes a DOI refers to an open access article, or an, an article that's available through open access. And if that's true, so uh, have we discussed open access in this class yet? Not in depth. Uh, we, we, we've come across the concept a little bit, but not in any great depth. Right. Well, um, basically, um, so open access would mean that it would probably, it's either free to read, or it, well, it's probably free to read, and it may also be free to sort of uh, edit and, and uh, have the, uh, and like make derivative works or reuse it. In, more permissible ways. So, if uh, if the DOI relates to an open access work, I would, we're also working on somehow badging that citation so that sometimes when you're on Wikipedia, you go to click through a citation only to be sort of stymied by the fact that um, that, there's, that you can't read it because it's behind a paywall or something. And so, you, like if, if something links to the New York Times, and you don't have a New York Times subscription, then not, sometimes you won't be able to read that citation. But we're trying to make it so that you, there'll be a badge, just like this PDF icon here, that will say open access. So you know before you're, click, you're clicking it that you're sort of going to, you're likely to get something that you, you can read um, for free. So that's the, pro, that's the project that I'm working on at the moment. Um, so perhaps we could. There's a question. That, do you have any other questions? Are there any questions on this that I could answer before we? That's um, let me, let me, Sarah, is there anything in the Etherpad that we should be well, I've at? actually I mainly been up. watching our uh, live chat. Um, I, I think I, I'm in a few places at once because I'm also tweeting and managing a few other things related to the class. But I think there was some confusion about whether you were just showing us Related tools or separate tools, and, and how uh, how um, how at the beginning when you went down to the bottom went through authority control, and we saw that interesting graphic rendering. Is all of this DOI information feeding directly into into that project? Is it one project? No, in fact, they're separate projects. Um, so I'm not I'm not with OCLC anymore. But they do seem kind of related, and that's only because I'm just sort of interested in that area, and sometimes I'm employed by companies to do it, and other times not. Um, yeah, so 
DOI yeah, is inter I'm seeing another question in chat. Um, DOI is international. It's like an ISBN. DOI stands for uh, Digital uh, Object Identifier. So like the I in um, so the, so it is international. And in fact, any but anywhere that an article is being published, um, it likely will have a DOI. Um, and so, like even the open educational resources, if there are journal articles about them, they may or may not have DOIs as well. Uh, yeah, any digital I, object. That's right, Kelly. Sir. I also see a um, a question. This is actually something that's come up on our class talk page recently. Um, we have we do have several students who are working on final projects in uh, in other languages, in Spanish and Japanese. Um, and so they're very interested in how the language links work. Uh, we haven't talked a great deal about Wikidata yet, uh, a little bit, but uh, but maybe you could walk us through that a little bit, and um, and with specifically how if someone's working on an article and they know that there's an article in another language that's on the same topic, how would they go about uh, fixing that link? If it's maybe linking two articles that aren't uh, quite the right ones. But as I understand it, the question is, how do I link two, uh, two Wikipedia articles that are on the same topic um, so that their language links on the, in the left-hand sidebar will match? Is that, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. And we did specifically have uh, one question on our talk page about uh, there are a couple of different, there's, there's uh, Tango Argentino, I think, is one article on English Wikipedia, and then there's also this article on Tango. And in Spanish, I, I don't remember exactly how it was, but, but that the article about the dance was maybe linked to the article in the other language about the music style or something like that. So if you run into a mistake, how would you go about fixing that? Is that do you think you can address that? If not, we can move on to something else. It's, uh, sure. So, so the way that to, no, no, it's it's not always possible because because sometimes there will be an English. So, okay, let us scroll down to where the language links normally occur, um, and then I will talk more about some of the. So you see here that the language the language link is sidebar. You can expand and contract it, the, uh, and you can see that in in, es in Espanol, uh, the name of the article is Spango, is Tango as well. Um, and you can also see that it's a featured article because it's got a badge next to it. Um, so the way that we can fix this is, this, this is a good article in this language. Yeah. The way that you can fix this is by using the, um, you see the cog icon at the top of the language um, Articles. Oh yeah, edit links. Sorry, there. Sorry, so that's language settings. So at the very bottom there is a, an edit links. Yeah. So the ver if we click on that, this will bring us to Wikidata, and one of the many things that Wikidata does is, uh, amongst other things, is is to uh, basically is to centrally store all these language links. So you can see that there's 68 languages. And, and if you felt like the lang that so if you, so this is a cluster of different Wikipedia articles, and if you felt like the that this there should be a different page, what you do is you'd click edit on the language that the cluster um, of the language. So there might be if the, and if, if the, okay, let's click on the English one actually. Let's cancel this. Just so that we can work in a language that everybody knows. So if we started type, if we deleted this and started typing Tango, um, I think it's going to auto-complete. So yeah. So to see this Tango music, Tango dance, Tango ballroom, Tango is a musical genre, Tango is a drink. If this was mistakenly um, mischaracterized, one could click on the right language link, uh, and then this is, and then. Um, after clicking save, some auto magic. That's fine. I mean, we we can always reverse it, so I, we can um, some magic would happen, and 
Oops. I don't know why there was an error. Um, but this would be the way to, to do it. Now, of course, okay, so this is saying that, that Tango Music is already in a different cluster. And, and, and it's probably to do with the Tango Music cluster rather than Tango as a genre itself. So, so one of the things that can be difficult is that sometimes there can be mergers, and sometimes different Wikipedias have different levels of granularity, like um, not to pick on the um, Estonians, but I, I imagine that there is probably less, gr that, that Tango maybe is only one article in Estonian versus Tango and Tango as a music genre. So, so how is it, so what, what is their one article that contains both the, the topic as a whole and the music genre, how does that relate to the English one that has like three, at least three separate different types of interpretations from Tango? Well, we just have to basically use our best judgment here because all the relationships in Wikidata are one to one. So one article is only ever linked to one other article. Um, and this is a, yes, the Estonians only have one article on Tango. They don't have an article on Tango the drink. Um, so we just use our, our best uh, intuition to overcome the technical hurdle of there only being one. Every article is linked to one, one other language article. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think so. I think really making significant changes to this is something that can become highly technical. So um, it it may be something that if it, those who have been asking about it on the talk page, um, maybe we should discuss it a little bit more, and uh, and I can walk you through more specifically exactly what needs to be done, or maybe just fix it for you if this is. Uh, if this is all a little confusing on the technical level, but at least you kind of see the general way that um, that this is handled on Wikipedia. Uh, I should say that Wikidata is relatively new among Wikimedia projects. Uh, we've, we've looked at Wikimedia Commons before, which is where media files, photos, and videos are stored so that they can be accessed by all the different language editions of Wikipedia. So Wikimedia Commons has been around for many years and is a very active project in its own right. Uh, Wikidata is something that uh, I believe it actually has been around for a few years uh, but wasn't officially adopted by the Wikimedia community until more recently. Uh, so it is, it is pretty active, but um, those of us who have really been in the Wiki, Wikipedia space, uh, it's a little new to us. I've, I've dealt with it a little bit, but uh, it's a little bit unfamiliar, and as you can see, it's, its interface is a little different from the other wikis where you're doing edit on these line entries. It's more like a database than an encyclopedia. So, um, you know, this is also sort of a window into how the technology that supports Wikipedia grows over time. Um, we do have some other um, some other questions. Uh, I I see uh, we we have a student asking uh, if you write an if you write a biography, for example. Um, that doesn't exist in any other language, what would you do in a case like that? I think probably that's just you wouldn't do anything. Uh, but you might want to start a, a Wikidata entry uh, for in case someone does cover them in another language. Is that about right, Max? And yes, your Wikidata. Yeah, yeah, I had to turn on the microphone. Your Wikidata, your, whenever. You don't have to add your article, or your article becomes automatically added to Wikidata in, in so far as that it's just not linked to anything else yet. So when you create a new article, it's not like you have to put it into Wikidata. It's only when you want to link several articles in several languages to each other that you'll have to do that. Wikidata will become a problem. But um, so so basically, you can imagine that when you create a new article, um, fifth. That you that you start a new Wikidata cluster and it's of size one and you don't see any article in it. Um, if you, I'm going to link, I I also did some research in to how into what percentage of articles um, have a foreign language uh, equivalents uh, in each different Wikipedia. So it turns out that like more than 50 percent of uh, English Wikipedia articles uh, have no foreign language equivalent. 
Um, and that actually kind of seems strange because I think when we normally are used to seeing side links, but that's because we just we don't dig down deep into that many articles that often. And actually, English Wikipedia is the most unique because it, or as I qualify it, because it has the fewest other um, it has the fewest other um, equivalent articles. And um, I'll link now into the if you're interested, I'll link to a, a blog post I wrote about comparing each la I did the same thing for every language. So I'll show you that link. To yes, please. So while you're pulling up that link, um, if I'm going to just come back and, and look through some of these questions. I've pulled up our Etherpad. Um, so someone's asked, can I start any new article I want? I think we'll come back to that in the lab session. Um, let's see. How do you know when a stub becomes a non-stub? Is this change the same thing as changing the overall status as required for the course? So. Um, I think this is uh, oh okay. I, so I think this is also probably one better left for the lab session. But Sarah tells me that she has a list for me. So uh, Sarah, where should I look? Uh, no, I just I've been monitoring all the ones on the Etherpad. So if we're switching to general Q and A, I could give you a summary of the ones that are over there, or or how well, I, I wasn't we sure have, where we were right now. Yeah, um, I think we still have uh, a little bit of time with our guests. Uh, we got about five minutes before the hour's over, so I would say if there's anything that's uh, that we'd like Max or Dan to address, now's the time to take those questions. I don't think anyone was putting those into the Etherpad. I think those are going into the chat box mainly. Okay, so let's let's all just take a moment and look through the the chat box. I've seen some going by, but I haven't been able to follow everything going in there, so. Uh, just take about 20 seconds or so. So I see Guiso says, could we look at this article in Portuguese that only links in one direction? That's an interesting case. Um, so Here's the article in Portuguese, and I see five different languages in addition. And if I click on the English one, where does that take us? Well, it looks like we have five links here as well. So I'm not sure I see the issue that you're pointing out. I, I can I, I don't see the, the behavior here. Yeah, I don't see the behavior here, but the way that, that the language links used to work is that there used to be different links inside each Wikipedia article, so it was up to each language to maintain their uh, own language links. I don't really want to get into that because we spent a lot of effort try getting away from that system and storing central language links in the database so that they would always be synchronized. But if you're really, really curious, there is a way to override the behavior if you only want one directional links. But yeah, it doesn't see the, this doesn't seem okay. anything, so. Well, it seems actually in the chat window, I think we figured it out. It's a much simpler, low tech issue. Uh, Griso just didn't have the languages menu <laughs> drops down. So uh, in case you just see the word languages and you don't see anything below it, it might just be that you need to click that triangle to see the list. Um, so uh, I, we are coming to the end of this, this hour here. Uh, if we don't have anything else specific to, um, uh, Dan, we haven't heard from you in a while, but we've talked about a bunch of stuff. Is there anything that you'd like to add before we finish up? Well, no, actually, I was more interested in what Max Hatt was having to say. I'd like to hear a little close out from him. <laughs> okay, let's let's do that. Max, can you uh, can you wrap us up and maybe maybe tell us about uh, what you how, if if you don't have anything, feel free to tell us anything you want to. But as a prompt, if you don't, um, what do you think uh, are some of the big issues uh, Wikipedia faces in the near future, and uh, and what what can we look forward to? Um, I, I, uh, 
Wow, what are the near-term problems for Wikipedia? Well, we know that editorship has been in decline, not to, to worry everybody, but up from a peak of about, um, you know, we've probably, since about 2007, about 20% of the editor population has gone. So I think that the, the next thing, I don't know if you're teaching visual editor in here, but basically because of some, what I consider to be like internal snafus, visual editor never came um, by, so uh, or, or is, it didn't have the splash it was supposed to have, which was supposed to allow a less technical audience to to to, to come in. So I highly recommend that you that you turn on visual editor yourself by clicking on preferences. Essentially, the problem why this this yeah you click is it beta features yeah I, I t basically I would say just turn on all these beta features that. They're essentially ready, in my opinion, but the, the Wikipedians can be the most nitpicky of all people, and so they complain to an extremely high degree, so um, that's why they have to be turned on manually, because there's a lot of old grouchy people who don't want to accept change. Don't tell anybody I said that. But I highly recommend yeah. that you check this box and click the I think uh, any of our students who uh, who enjoy debate uh, will will enjoy. Uh, once you've left us, they can ask me about this uh, in the next hour, and they'll probably find that I am one of those old grouchy editors. So, <laughs> uh, we, I, I think I can probably represent both sides of that uh, that particular debate. Uh, if Max doesn't want to stick around with us, but um, there, there are I think uh, varying views on these things, and it just as a very very brief uh, statement on this, I. I absolutely believe that visual editor is a very, very important place for Wikipedia to go. It must be simpler to edit. It's, it's, it's really essential that people coming to Wikipedia don't have to learn all the code and everything that you guys have, have learned. Um, but I just don't feel that the visual editor is ready yet. There are too many things uh, that you can't do with it. And uh, having it just enabled by default, I think, would make it, uh, it sort of would put new editors in a position where they're not able to influence things uh, on Wikipedia that, that aren't really handled well by the interface. So I think some of that needs to be resolved before it's enabled by default. But I do think it's well worth you guys uh, experimenting with alongside the regular editor. Back to you, Max. Well, there you go. There's the whole debate in a nutshell about visual editor. But um, it's, it's there. I just wanted to show you that it's there for you to, to check out. Um, and uh, that, no, that so that was um, what I'm. I, d I don't have anything uh, more to say on, on that. Uh, I wanted to leave you with one controversial thought about the um, Open Educational Resources page, which was another assignment for me. I noticed that it's quite large, um, the the page itself, um, and. I think that the, the section that least fits in here is the uh, initiative section because in comparison to the other sections, it's, qu it's quite long. Um, and it's also everybody, every open access initiative kind of wants to get their say in here. So m my suggestion, which you can mock uh, it or take uh, however much you like, would be to split this up into another page. And also, in addition, maybe you can make it one of those pages, which is like a comparison of or list of pages, which have those, which are mainly like list type articles. Um, and that's another thing that you could explore, like sort of what list articles are. So maybe split off the initiative section into a list of. List of. Uh, and okay. that's what I have to say. So, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us, both Max and Dan. Uh, I think we got a really uh, excellent array of perspectives on Wikipedia. Uh, so I think we'll have lots to talk about in the rest of the class session. Uh, I think our guests both have to leave us, but uh, why don't the rest of us take a break as has become our custom so that we can keep our, uh, our brains fresh. Uh, let's return at, at 20 minutes past the hour. Um, oh, wait, I, I think we have a comment from Sarah before we break. Hi, well, I was just going to say that we actually happened to have in a previous session a speaker who introduced a visual editor in a video, 
which I just reviewed earlier today. So for anyone who feels like watching a sort of step-by-step -step introduction to the visual editor, um, I'll paste the link into the IM box. You probably want to go to full screen because the font size is quite small on her screen while she introduces it, but something to watch during the break. Okay, that's an excellent idea. So we'll we'll have that in the chat window here in a moment, uh, and maybe we'll also put it in the Etherpad. And if you want to watch it during the break, that's great. If you want to take a break, I highly encourage it. I don't know about you, but I always uh, benefit from actually stepping away from the computer for a few minutes. Um, so uh, it might be something you want to watch after class as well. Anyway, uh, I will see you all at 20 minutes past the hour. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.